Hi, this is Alex from phpacademy.org with a video tutorial for the new Boston. In this video, we're going to be creating a form with an input field uh, with the type file. I'm also going to be creating a button next to this. Now, what's going to happen is when we actually go ahead and upload the file, or sorry, select a file from our computer, this submit button to actually go ahead and submit the file through the form it will be automatically enabled. So the first thing we're going to look at is uh, our file structure and what we have. Now the first thing is that we have uh, index.php and then we have ext.js which I've included on the page. Uh, I've also obviously got jQuery included because we're making use of jQuery selectors uh, and also the uh, remove attribute um, functionality of jQuery as well. So we're looking at a few sort of basic things here that we can bring together to create a more you know useful and advanced uh, script. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is actually create my form. So let's go ahead and create a form. And we're going to set the action in this case to hash because we're not going to submit the form anywhere but obviously you might be submitting this uh, somewhere. I'm going to set the method in here to post and I'm going to set the ink type to multi-part form data. Now obviously this doesn't apply to you if you're just looking at the jQuery side of things. Uh, chances are if you are following this for the purpose of you know, implementing this into your own script, you'll already have something similar set up. However, I'm just doing it for the benefit of those who are unsure how to pass file data correctly through form attributes. So in this case, this is how we would normally set up a form. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and actually create my input um, file. Um, now we can either give this a, a class or an ID uh, or we could just literally go ahead and use the next traversing option in jQuery. So I'm going to show you how we can do it in several ways but for now uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and give this an ID. And I'm going to give this an ID of file so we can use jQuery selectors to pick up on uh, this file ID. Uh, after this I'm going to create a submit button which ultimately would submit the data to uh, the page that we specify in the action. Uh, I'm going to give this a value of upload and I'm also going to give this an ID as well and that's just going to be called submit or will it, let's go ahead and call it upload. No, we'll call it submit. Keep the uh, naming conventions the same. Uh, but I'm also going to give this an attribute of disabled. Let's just view it without that first. Uh, you can see that I've got my form here where I can go ahead and select a file and then I've got my upload button here that when I click it will go to the page we specified. At the moment that's just hash. So what we want to do now is disable this upload button and when we click on choose file and then actually choose a file from our computer we then want the upload button to be re-enabled. So let's go ahead and set the disabled property for this button or this submit button as disabled uh, and that will basically disable the button so we can't press it. You can see that it's greyed out now in my browser and I'm unable to click upload. And this is going to prompt users to go ahead and, and choose a file uh, and click, a, click it before they choose upload. So we don't want the user to be able to submit an empty um, file attribute or a file um, element on our page. So we're going to go over to ext.js and we know that the ID of our file uh, that we select from is file and we know that our submit button is submit so we can use these to actually um, you know, modify things or set event handlers. Uh, so I'm using now ext.js for all my external JavaScript. So I'm going to come over to ext.js and the first thing I want to do is just set up this jQuery code. So I'm going to say document.ready. So we're appending the sorry, uh, we're appending the ready event handler onto our document. And inside here, once the page is ready or the document is ready, we execute the code inside of here. Now, like I said, the first thing we want to do is go ahead up and set an event handler to this file. So we're going to use the selector hash and then file because we're using uh, an ID selector. So let's go ahead and first of all select this, so hash file, and then we append on an event handler. Now this event handler is change. Whenever this form field changes, we can go ahead and actually run a piece of code and inside that is, is is our function here so if we come down we could perhaps alert um, something has changed 
So once uh, anything on this file uh, element changes, i.e. Uh, a user selects a new file, uh, let me just tell you exactly what happens. When we select a file um, and from our computer, so when we click on this and then choose a file, uh, here's the file name that's displayed just here. However, we actually add it into the attribute value. So we can actually grab the value uh, from this. So change meaning has have any attributes changed or have any additional attributes been added. When we select a file, the value attribute is added. So what we can do now is when we refresh and we click on here, when we click on say tartan.jpg, what this will do is it will change the value attribute of this field to the location of tartan. It will be a fake path, but it will still change. And therefore, when we select it, you see we have this uh, dialog box, something has changed. So we know that when a file has changed, we can grab the, um, for example, we're not going to be actually doing this, but we can grab the value attribute of this. So I could uh, perhaps say uh, value equals, sorry, value equals, and I could say this, which obviously refers to uh, this object here. Uh, I could say this dot attribute value, and then we could alert out value.